Welcome to the lecture series on real analysis. In this lecture, what we are going to see is that we are going to see bounded metric space ideas. That is, we will deal about the bounded sets in more detail. Let us get into it. Before seeing what do we mean by a bounded metric space, let us recall what do we mean by a bounded set. A set E of a metric space is said to be bounded if there exists a point in the metric space okay, such that the distance of this point is less than some positive quantity for some real number m and this has to be true for all the elements in the set. Now with the definition of a bounded set we are going to extend it to a metric space. Yes. We know that every set is a subset of itself. So when you consider your E to be S and if this is satisfying this condition, then we may say that it is a bounded metric space. That is, if all the elements in a metric space satisfies this condition, then we can say it is a bounded metric space. Let us try to refine the statement of the boundedness. Here there exists some Q such that this is happening. We may say it in this way or we may also say it in another way that d of p comma q is smaller than m for some real quantity, positive real quantity and this is true for all the elements in the set. We may also say in this form. Now the boundedness depends on what? The boundedness depends on the metric space that we have. That is and the metric that we define on the space is going to play a very important role in checking whether the set is bounded or not. Okay, let us see some examples of bounded as well as non-bounded things. Initially, let us start with the metric space that is real line. Here we have defined several metrics, right? <coughs> Let us explore with the help of each metric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Form comma option letter of x one this one. D three of x. D four of x. We have defined on this object of x plus absolute of y if x not equal to and a zero if x is y. Anything else did we define? Yeah, we will consider if x not equals y and yeah. So let us consider these matrix on the real line and let us try to see whether this metric space that is the entire real line is bounded in these contexts or not. Generally from the schooling itself we have uh, continuously seen that set of all real numbers is unbounded. There and all we simply deal those things with the help of a standard Euclidean metric. We were not told that we are using standard Euclidean metric and that is why uh, the set of all real numbers is unbounded but that was the actual case. So under the first metric you are not able to identify some m satisfying this condition. So this is going to be what under this metric your r is unbounded only. So hope uh, we don't need a special proof to say this is unbounded. Okay. Uh, here, come to the second case. That is minimum of 1 comma absolute of x minus 1. This minimum value is going to be lesser than or equals 1. Right. Whatever may be the value that you give for these two things, this is going to be less than or equals 1, which means your d of uh, that is d2 of x comma y 
will be less than or equals 1 for all x, y in x. Here that is actually happening. If it is bigger than 1, 1 will be chosen. If it is uh, smaller than 1, this will be chosen. That is also less than or equals 1. Therefore, your metric value is less than or equals 1. Here you have not uh, in the definition that is P of D of P comma Q less than M for some real quantity, positive real quantity M and this has to be true for all the elements in the set. Here we are considering the entire metric space to be the set. Okay, so this is happening under this your R becomes a bounded metric space. What is happening here? Let us try to see that too. <clears throat> this is some positive real quantity, right? So let me write simply that as D3 plus 1. Okay, uh, let me write that as D. I have D plus 1 upon D. Whether this is bounded or not, just uh, you consider this D to be some positive real number and assuming that you just try to see what is happening here. Okay. I may write this in this form as well. So this is going to be 1 minus 1 over 1 plus D. This is going to be some positive quantity. So when your D is uh, sorry non-negative quantity this tells you your 1 plus d is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay. If your 1 plus d is 0, what will you get? You are going to get uh, 1 minus 1 that will be 0. Okay. And if your d value is becoming bigger, bigger, that is if your d value in this case, what will you get? You will get this to be somewhat bigger than 1. So 1 upon that value is something smaller than 1. Okay, whether it will exceed 1, that is my question is, will we get negative value for this quantity? No. Whatever may be the value that you give here, that makes this quantity lesser, so that will be separated from 1. Okay, even if you go till infinity, it is going to be 0. Okay, that means... When you approach infinity, this value is becoming very, 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 very smaller. Then you will get 1. So, in this case, what is happening? Uh, your this value, let me call this value to be D3. Your D3 value is going to be 0. It may approach 1. Okay. 1 may not be attained. So, it is going to be the case. Your D3 value will be in this thing only. Therefore, what? I can say my D3 is smaller than or equals 1, right? So, in this case also, my metric is bounded, okay? The value of the metric is going to lie in this interval only. Hence, I can conclude under this metric, my real line is bounded. Now, let us see in the fourth and fifth cases what is happening. Can you just go through this and tell me what is going to happen here? It is given that it is absolute of x plus absolute of y. Be it positive value or negative value, you are going to get some value here. And when you increase the value of x and y, this value is also going to infinity. As your x goes to infinity or y goes to infinity, are both. So you cannot conclude that this is a bounded quantity. Right? So under 4 your R is unbounded. Now let us see the fifth case. What is the fifth case? It is the discrete metric. And in the previous lectures itself, I have told you people that this can be defined on any space. So, it can be defined on R as well. Now, what is happening here? The value is either 0 or 1. It cannot take any other value. So, your metric value can be 1 among this. And this clearly tells you that 
this is bounded so under this metric also your r is bounded hope you have had some idea of what bounded metric spaces are the boundedness depends on the metric that we define on a set that does not depend on the set alone it depends also on the metric thank you for watching this video if you have any queries you can post it in the comment section that will be clarified within 24 hours of time thank you